watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. What a joy in the house again. On behalf of the council, the council and the college of the bishops, the apostle, the prophet, and also the chaplain network, we want to highly, from the depth of heart, welcome you all to this great section. I am so excited because we have a father of the faith in the land of Houston, Texas, America. Wherever you are watching us, either you're watching us from Canada, you're watching us all the way in the different social media platform in Asia, in Africa, in Europe. I want to give you this credence that today is going to be an explosive one. We have an anointed apostle of God in the house. And we are here together for the 100 days consecration, fire consecration, oil impartation for supernatural wealth transfer. This agenda that God has given to us today, remember that I said, you, you are part of this reason. That is God's mind for you and your family so that through you, you'll be a platform to expand the kingdom of God via prosperity. One more time, I want to welcome every one of our audience from the church in Houston, Texas, down to our network of bishops, council of apostles and prophets and even chaplain network. I want to bless everyone in the emancipation network. I want to bless you. And to you, please, I want you to share this program. Send to your friends. Share, share, share. Something is about to happen to your spirit, man. I'm so excited. We have a great man of God in the house that will be doing a very, very, very wonderful justification to this world. And today also, we are going to be stable on the book of Zechariah chapter 1. We are going to be looking at the word of God that is final, settled in heaven. Sir, we want to welcome you for coming to the studio of this, our 100 days oil and fire consecration for supernatural wealth transfer. We welcome you, sir, and we appreciate you. Before we go on, we want you to introduce yourself to the global, the global church and our audience. Well, dear friends, it's, it's very humbling for me to be here. Uh, and, and to share my heart with you regarding what God is doing in the land in the end time. Mm. My name is Pastor Augustine de Gaulle, uh, and I'm the uh, Senior Pastor of Throne Room Worship Center. Also, um, Augustine de Gaulle Ministries here in Houston, Texas. God bless you. Um, and I'm just excited. Uh, please stay tuned because... Uh, uh, something good is about to happen to you. Hallelujah. Um, uh, by the revelation of the word of his majesty. I believe that from the depths of my heart, um, you are not watching today's program by accident. Wow. But that God is going to release a rhema word. A, a word that will take you from where you are to where you belong. My God. To where you belong. Where the enemy has declared a casting down. My God. And you have felt cast down for so long. Today, we are here to declare a lifting up. In the name of Jesus. You know, Moses before... Uh, when, when he brought the children of Israel out of captivity, yes, sir. Um, towards the end of his life, uh, Deuteronomy 6, uh, 23, he said to Israel, The Lord our God, hmm. he brought us out, out from dance, out of bondage, Kabbalah, that is it. out of Poverty. Case, Kelly and out of luck. My God. He brought us out of a place of non entity. My God. Into his inheritance. My God. My God. A place of wealth. A place of abundance. 
my God. A place of open heavens, my God. A place where the Spirit of the living God provides on a daily basis. In fact, the Bible says the land they inherited is a land that drinks its water from the rain that comes from his presence. His presence from, heaven. from the beginning of the year to the very last day of the year. God is about to visit you financially today. Amen. Bishop, um, um, Permit me to call you that name. So I know you are so humble. You don't want us to know you are an archbishop. No, <laughs> but no, it, no, just, but please. there is something you just said. There is something you just said. And, and this coincides with what Zechariah 1 is saying. If this is what God expects from us. He said, I am exceedingly angry with the nations at ease. For I was a little angry. And they helped but with evil intention against the people of God. Look at 16. 16 now says something that a lot of us have not considered. He said, Therefore, thus says the Lord, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercy. Yes. My house shall be built in it, yes. says the Lord of hosts, and a severe line shall be stretched over Jerusalem. 17 now breaks the camel back. How will God do this? How will Jehovah do this? That goes back to what you were saying. He said, and again, pro again proclaim, again pray. Now, talking about the essence of prayer. These hundred days we are staying in the presence of God to realign ourselves to his will and purpose. He said, thus says the Lord of hosts, my cities, not one, there are many cities to be conquered, shall again spread out through prosperity. Man of God, are you shocked? So, without prosperity, there is no spreading. You know, poverty is a curse. Poverty is a curse. It is a curse of the highest kind. Rabashi Kalabasha. Uh, several years ago, my God. Uh, several years ago, I watched um, I watched a movie, students, and um, uh, uh, they had formed groups. They were in cliques. Wow. And a, a group of these students were from very rich family. Yes, yes. But this young girl came to that same school from a very poor family. Hmm. And uh, he happened to cross paths with the rich girls. And uh, in, in the process of interaction, yes. one of them said to her, Look at you, looking and smelling like poverty. Whoa, poverty. Whoa, has a smell. Whoa, poverty has a look. Wow, uh, the Bible says that a poor man's neighbors they hate him. The poor man's neighbor hates him. Poverty decides where you eat and what you eat. We, we are. Hold it on, Bishop. We are going to be taking... Um, already, people are already dialing into the station uh, because of you. They know you are online. And uh, a lot of questions, prayer, prayer requests is coming in. But we are going to hold this on so that when we finish this discussion, we are going to go into prayers. Okay. And we are going to be taking all the prayers that is coming in. We are going to connect it now in the station. Please, if you know you have a prayer, as this is going on, if the Lord is hitting you at a particular direction, please, the, the number is 832-762-0937. Send in your prayer request, send in your questions, and we shall be handling it by the grace of God. God bless you. So, man of God, go ahead. Poverty has a smell. Poverty has a look. It has a look. Poverty determines how you walk. My God. A poverty determines which restaurant you go to. My God. Listen, your church doesn't grow because of poverty. Poverty determines where you worship, where you hold your church. Bashika Labada. Poverty. Poverty is a curse. My the God. word of God declares a poor man's voice is not It's heard. not hard. It's not. It's not. Who, who do who do want to hear and that type of And his wisdom is despised. 
in order to be able to preach this gospel your voice has to be heard the bible says money answereth all things my god do do you know do you know as we sit here right now that if bill gates decides to start a church tomorrow he will have one of the biggest congregations my god whether he's called or not <laughs> he's anointed or whether he went to bible school or not <laughs> because you see he has a voice my and god. money gave him that voice my god the lord you see jesus spoke more about money than many other subjects in his in life in his lifetime wow god never intended for you and i to be poor god never intended he never intended so so why are many in the church in that state of poverty whereby they cannot support kingdom agenda you see prosperity prosperity is one of the pillars of the christian faith prosperity prosperity is one is of the one of the pillars of the christian faith of the christian faith wow but but you see uh, kingdom wealth comes by kingdom principles obeying and following kingdom principles hmm. there are principles that the scriptures the bible jesus we have the person of jesus who comes to prepare you for glory hmm. for heaven but it is possible for Jesus to prepare you for glory, mm -hmm. but you remain poor until the day you see him in glory. So, because so, you fail oh my to God. follow kingdom principles, principles, the principles and teachings of Jesus. So, so Bishop, that means one can be attacked to the extent that you don't follow the principle and you don't know it's an attack. By not following the principle. For what we see. And I lifted up. I raised my eyes. That is a vision thing. And I looked. So if he did not raise his eyes to look. You will not understand that there are four horns. Now. Now. now let's stay focused on, on, on this scripture. Yes. Um, it is possible also to follow the principles. But come short. And fall short because horns have been lifted against you my god my god the prophet of the living god lifted up his eyes yes god was about to lift up the veil wow on why his covenant people Remember when we started, we spoke about how God, he brought us from death. From death, yes. To bring us into his inheritance. Yes. When they left Egypt, they left with silver and gold. Yes. They spoiled Egypt. Y you know that movie, The Ten Commandments, that you see on television where you see them pushing around ghosts yes. and uh, yeah. looking. No, 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 no. When they left, they left as the bling bling generation. Every last person in the camp left very very rich it is part of kingdom pillar but now here they are in the land of promise a land that flows with milk and honey receives its rain from heaven and yet the majority were underprivileged wow struggling wow and the prophet wanted to know what the problem is. He he, he was in prayer, and God was about to, to 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 unveil the mystery behind the lack. And God opened his eyes, and he saw four horns. 
Now understand that horns, horns have been used in scripture as metaphors. Metaphors, yes. Both in the kingdom of God and in the kingdom of darkness. True, sir. But in the scripture, the horn referred to were horns of demonic altars. My God. So, so there are voices from demonic altars that can stop a man? No, no, no. You see, horns in the demonic kingdom are destructive tools. These horns were destroyed. When you see animals that have horns, that is what they used to fight, fight. to go to battle, yes. to defend themselves. That is true. These spiritual horns have a life of their own. Their assignment is to make sure the Bible mentions Judah. Mm. which stands for your praise mm -hmm. israel which stands for you god when 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 jacob was renamed israel the angel said to him you are a prince and you have strength with god with god and with man and with man prevail as divine favor man. now the horns made sure that Jerusalem, which stands for peace, peace, your divine favor, relationship with God, God, and your praise had no say so, were minimized, were limited. My God. Their assignment is to make sure you can only rise so far and you will not go beyond a certain level. Limitation. My God. These horns have drawn the line and they are declaring to the covenant people of God you cannot rise beyond this line. Bishop, I, I, let me hold you there. A question is coming in and I want to take this question all the way from Asia, from Japan. And the person is saying, uh, what type of horns can this be? He now put a suggestion. Are they ancestral horns, generational horns? Are they foundational horns? And how can we deal with them? All the above. All the above. So we don't leave anything. All the above. They can be ancestral, generational. They can be horns that came as a result of your own dealings. But remember what Jesus said in John chapter number 10 and verse 10. My God. The thief cometh not. He has one assignment. And that is to steal, to, to kill. kill, and to destroy. My God. He positions horns, forces, voices, demons powers around you to make sure that you are limited that you don't have the capacity to do what you were born to do to fulfill your assignment your purpose in life you don't walk in divine alignment with god there are demons assigned to every part of your body my god there are forces assigned to to, to manipulate what you see. My God. Manipulate what you hear. My God. Manipulate what you say. Say, it. you see, what, one of the things the church needs to come into, grip, into grips with is the fact that Satan is not a fool. You can call Satan every name you want, but one name you can never call Satan is that he's a fool. Satan is not a fool. The guy is very smart. He succeeded at it for, for 6,000 years of human history. My God. And he hasn't given up. He hasn't changed any of his tactics. He's defeated by Jesus, but he parades around as though he has not been defeated. And his place of victory is over the ignorance of the of church. victim. My People perish. perish for lack of knowledge. Wow. So, Bishop, 
the second part of that question, you are going deep. And I'm beginning to feel we don't have enough time. He said, how do we deal? Because in that same scripture we saw in verse 18, where they talk about uh, the carpenters. How do we deal with these horns? Well, because well, we're well, having a lot of well, people sending you know, <laughs> you know, invoking the carpenters have to do with prayer. Kayaba Shagana. But not just any prayer. Not any type of prayer. No, 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 no. Prayer rooted in righteousness. My Gilandi is here. Prayer that is rooted in righteousness. In, in extreme purity. righteousness and purity. 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 The church needs to return to the place of purity. The forces that you look, the Bible says, the prince of this world cometh. And he has nothing in me. So he comes to such. He has nothing in me. Satan the devil is not joking. Listen to me, My dear God. friend. There was a meeting held up in heaven. And Satan showed up in the book of Job. And God said to him, have you considered my servant Job? His righteous is upright. God went on. Satan said to God, I have checked him out already. Whoa. He has already Second checked him all, out. God said to him, from whence cometh thou? He gave a twofold answer. From going to Two? and fro in the earth and up and down in it. Please believe me, Satan Jalabada. has already checked you out. Been there, done that, to and fro, in and out. And he is determined to take you out. To make sure that you serve God, but that you serve him, Paul. Poverty brings frustration. Without poverty, you will break through. But with poverty, you are held at ransom. My God. You are held at ransom. Poverty is the main reason for many divorces in the world today. Number one, number one reason for divorce in marriages is poverty. Both in the church. Both outside and in yes, the sir. church. One of the reasons why we are having many false prophets in the church today, today is because of poverty. My God. People are finding ways just to, to, to make survive. things fit and mm -hmm. to survive. And so they would go and take whatever is out there and bring it into the church just to make it and beat that spirit called poverty. My God. Poverty, it is a curse. Man of God, um, we, are, we are receiving a lot, of, a lot of messages, but we have limitation of time. I guess we're going to bring you back again for us to have a part two of this. But I, I, because of the limitation of time, I would want you to outline uh, for some of our pastors. We have threefold um, outreach for the network and the college of our bishop, apostles, and the prophets, and also the chaplain network that are there listening to us. We also have our church members in our different network of churches, and we also have people who are new, who don't, don't even understand where they will start. So somebody wrote in that, how can I start? Well, it, it, we have said earlier uh, that the kingdom is a kingdom of principles. Yes. Uh, the teachings of Jesus. There are principles that Jesus has laid down when it comes to kingdom prosperity. Kingdom prosperity don't just answer to prayer. My God. It answers to tithing. It answers to giving. It answers to uh, a sacrificial giving. Hmm. To tithing as a foundation. And to, 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 to be the one that God can trust for kingdom prosperity to flow through you. My God. You must be the one that have money. Hmm. Money shouldn't have you. The one, so you should control money? You should be the one that controls money. And money, money not control you. shouldn't control you. As God That child. was the problem of the young rich ru ruler who came to Jesus. He had money. He thought he had money, but it was money that had him. Money got his heart. Jesus said to him, like he said to the other 12 disciples, come and follow me after you do this. 
but money got his heart and he couldn't let go. If you can release that money into the hands of his majesty, if you can trust God with your finances through sacrificial giving and tithing and helping and doing all, Listen, there was a time that the nation of Israel withheld from the poor. They withheld from the widow. They withheld from the needy. Hmm. And they went into captivity for 70 years for withholding back. Wow. It took them 70 years to come to the altar to seek God through prayer. Why are we doing all this? And God said, this is the reason. You have forsaken the needy. You have forsaken the widows. You have not given to the poor. They were talking about, we are tithing, we are doing this. And God said, no, no, no. I gave you simple instructions. Kingdom principles. The kingdom of God. The simplicity of kingdom principles is why many are having difficulties, difficulties. today. Wow. The, the simplicity. simplicity. Of kingdom principles is why many are having problem to stick to them don't be one of those and before we close this section as many of you who are out there saying how I can start like the bishop said before now you have to be a covenant person that God will trust and for you to come into covenant with God the first covenant is the covenant of salvation That's right. if you are there you have not given your life to Jesus I will employ the bishop to pray for you wherever you are. Archbishop, please, I want you to pray for our audience. As many that have not given their life to Christ, many who have backslidden, many who may not have backslidden, but they don't understand the principle. I want you to pour out your heart because I want every one of us to come to the measure of the inheritance of the saints in Christ Jesus. Go ahead, sir. Well, let us pray and repeat Do these prayers you. after me. Sweet. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. And I come to you. And I come to just you. Just as I am. Just as I am. Forgive me. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. Wash me. Wash me. From every sin. From every sin. Make me whole. Make me whole. Now fill me. Fill me. With your Holy Spirit. With your Holy Spirit. Teach me. Teach me. On a daily basis. On a daily basis. Through your word. Through your word. How to live for how you. How to live for I you. I thank you. Father, I thank you for the name of Jesus. In the name of I'm Jesus, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Amen. Amen. Finally, before we go, we have a prayer request. And in, in, in cumulation of that prayer request, can, can we begin to pray that the grace to be able to walk in the principles of kingdom enlargement and kingdom supernatural wealth transfer to come upon the people of God? That grace. Yes. I pray for you. Yes, Lord. That grace is released. In the name of Jesus. To walk in kingdom principles. I pray for you that the ability to obey God, Amen. to love God, Amen. and to cleave to Him in the name is of released upon you Amen. and in your life Amen. to walk in obedience in the name of to Jesus. serve God like never before in the name of Jesus. by the help of the Spirit of Rabbi the living God the in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One more time, I want to thank you for joining us in this episode. By God's grace, we shall continue in tomorrow's production in day number 97. I want to thank you for joining us today. And I pray that as you go through this again and again, the heart of God will be made synchronous to your heart. You will fall in alignment with the will of God. And you do His will. And it becomes easy for wealth Hallelujah. to be transferred to you. One Hallelujah. more time. I want to thank you, my Archbishop, for coming. Thank you so much for this depth of wisdom. And I want to thank every one of you. And we bring this section to a close in the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the Word of God prosper in your life. In Jesus' name, we worship. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And see you tomorrow. You are now watching Amazing Fire TV. Fire TV, impacting the world for Christ.